Well, I'm very pleased to be here to address this gathering. The workers at Conselmer, your union, are the front lines for working people all across this country. Every issue facing working people and labor is staring you in the face. You've had to deal with a greedy employer, unsatisfied with having a profitable business, who wanted to t take more out of you, the ones who are creating their wealth. We have a legally recognized right to strike in this country. But when they have the right to bring in replacement workers and nobody can stop them, you don't really have the right to strike. And we have a, gov a governor who's used our tax money to pay to train workers to take your jobs. So you, what you're facing is really what we're facing all across the country. Now, we, this, these rights that workers have fought for have been fought for for a long time. And workers' blood has been spilled in Detroit, in Gary Steel Mills, in the mines of West Virginia. And every time workers gained something, they had to stand together and they had to fight for it. And every time they try to take it away, workers have to stand up again and say, no, you can't. Now, for many years, workers were told that employers and workers were all really on the same side. As, as Ann talked about, we're a team. We're all working together. And workers want the businesses they're working in to be successful. You work hard. You work hard for the company and you expect to be paid decently for it. But when you've done that, when you've worked hard, you've put out, used your, your brains and your muscles to make good products, and they still want to take that away from you, and you fight back, they tell you you're greedy. They tell you that you're selfish. They tell you that you're starting a class war. And that's not true. They are. They're the ones who are greedy. They're the ones who are selfish. They're the ones who are starting the class war. Now, what you've been doing, and what you've been doing for all of us, is that your standing together shows working people in the, this country that it's possible. You've been out for three years. That's really remarkable, and you should give yourselves a hand for that. It's hard to do. You guys want to go back to work. You're not living on trust funds that you can take three years off and not get paid. So when you go on strike because you think that working people deserve to be de treated decently, you're not st only standing up for yourselves, you're standing up for all of us. So this is important. This is why people like myself, uh, who work at IUSB, I'm a teacher, I'm part of this community, want to stand up with you. Because you, what you're doing for yourself, you're also doing for us. Now, there are two things I want to ask you to do. First, I'm happy to see a lot of you brought your kids here. But I want to tell you, when I teach at IUSB, a lot of my students are the first generation to go to college. And a lot of my students have grown up with union wages putting food on their table, paying for their sneakers, paying for them to go to college. And you know what? When I ask them about that, they don't know. Say, well, Where'd your dad work? Where'd your mom work? Were they a member of a union? I said, well, yeah, I guess so. Every Thursday night, they went out into the hall. So workers in our community are not telling their kids about what the union's doing. So their kids grow up thinking that unions aren't that important. Now, this is not simply an educational question. Because if you grow up thinking that unions aren't important, what's going to happen when some factory wants to hire you and you walk right by the picket line saying, well, this has nothing to do with me. I need a job. So I want to ask you that when you go home tonight, and when you see your kids or your grandkids, you make sure to tell them that everything they have, every hamburger they eat, every time they tie their sneakers, that's because of union wages that you fought for together. Now, if you teach them that, when they come to me, it'll be a lot easier for me to do my job. Because I'm trying to tell them, says, you cross a picket line, you're betraying your family. You're betraying your community. You know, we, we're told a lot, so tell your kids, just say no to all this bad stuff. But we want to tell our kids, just say no to scabbing. Right? It's as bad as anything else they can do for, to themselves. 
Now, Dan mentioned that there are things that we have to have done. We got to have legislation to stop replacement workers. That nice word they have for scabbing, right? Scabbing sounds so mean, right? Well, we want us to have legislation that says, when there's a strike going on, if we're going to have the legally recognized right to strike in this country, then we have to have a law that says you can't cross the picket line. That employer can't go out and say, not only do we want people to cross the picket line, but we're going to go to the governor and he's going to pay to train people to do my job. Right? We need health care legislation. There are too many people in this country who when their kid gets sick, instead of calling up the doctor, they say, gee, I hope it's not too bad. Well, gee, I hope it's not too bad is not medicine. Right? But if you're talking about paying $50 a doctor's visit, and you're deciding between having dinner next Sunday and paying for kids' medicine, you're going to go to the, gee, I hope it's not too bad school of medicine. Right? So we got to stop that. We need to have the Employee Free Choice Act. We need to give workers everywhere the right to choose whether they're a member of a union. Now the problem we're facing, and you know it as well as I, that while Indiana voted Democratic in this election, the first time in 34 years, right, and that's really important, we all know that there are working people in this state that have voted Republican and still vote Republican. And we have to go to our cousins, our parents, our neighbors, and tell them that every vote for Republican takes food off my table, takes my job out of this state, leads to foreclosures. And we have to be able to say to working people in this state and say to the Republican Party that not one worker in this state will ever vote for people who are going to take jobs away from working people, who are going to take food off the, off the plates of children of workers, who are going to underfund our schools, who are going to make it impossible for us to go to the doctor. Every vote for a Republican does that, and we're going to say never again. So I'm really pleased to be here. I think you should be proud of yourselves. Every working person in this state has to be proud of you for holding the line for working people all over the state. And we're with you. And congratulations and keep strong.